Good morning. This is Steve. I'm speaking to you from home again, but today it's a little too breezy outside for me to talk to you from out there. Um, I don't have one of those fancy microphones that uh, keeps out the wind. So this week, um, a couple of my friends rubbed, rubbed up against each other on my Facebook page. One of them was a Christian, a religious person, and the other one was not. And they rubbed each other the wrong way and sparks started flying. And uh, following my editorial policy, I uh, deleted some comments and asked them to, uh, yeah, be friends. But it got me to thinking. Why do Christians have such a difficult time understanding it when a person says, I'm spiritual, not religious? Well, it turns out that there's a very good reason for that, that we don't really acknowledge in our culture. <clears throat> what does spiritual mean? Historically, until about the last 50 years, spiritual and religious were synonyms. They meant the same thing. If you were spiritual, you were religious. If you were religious, you were spiritual. But today, according to Wikipedia, if you look in the literature from academics, there are 27 different definitions of what it means to be spiritual. And there's very little commonality between them. <clears throat> the terms began to diverge, actually, about the middle of the 1800s, as many Protestants began to embrace the human origins of the Bible. And if the Bible was not God-breathed, every word direct from God, they didn't find any reason to consider it authoritative. And if there was no authoritative foundation for Christianity to stand on, then in the words of, of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, we need to transcend religion. Today, the term tends to focus on a personal internal experience of an individual rather than on belief or on the corporate experience or the corporate activities. So before we even start this discussion, I need to tell you what spiritual means for me. And for me, it's quite simple. I'm spiritual. For me, that means I want to be good and I want to find a meaning that goes deeper than the materialistic values that I see represented in my culture, where the hedonism and thrill-seeking that also seems to be have a strong current around me. I spent a decade struggling with whether I wanted to be a Christian or just spiritual, because I saw some conflict there. Like many others, I have a couple of issues with Christianity. I don't like the way Christians behave, and I don't like some of the things that I hear Christians saying about God. Now, I wasn't bothered by hypocrisy, people who said one thing but really didn't live up to it in their lives, because uh, everyone falls short of their, their own expectations. Everyone wears a mask to conceal their feelings and conceal their failings. I would rather be around people who are trying to do good and falling short of it than around people who have given up the struggle or who have embraced the dark side. Now, having said that, I understand why people go there. They just get tired of getting judged. And what bothered me most about 
church people was the way they answered every question with a Bible quote. It felt like they were saying, don't think, just memorize. I was young and arrogant and very confident in my intellectual capabilities back then. And to me, a Bible quote just felt like a put off. Now, I had friends that had other issues. Uh, some couldn't understand how the world could be in such a mess. If God was all powerful and all knowing, then he certainly was not loving. It's a valid question. It's a real question. It's a question that some of the Christian answers actually makes worse. And then there was the whole issue of an eternally burning hell. If you don't obey me, I will burn you in hell forever. Now, I know some Christians say that very sincerely. I also know that many Christians are deathly afraid of hell and afraid to give it up for fear that if they aren't afraid of hell, they won't want to be good. If I, fail, if I applied fire to my child as punishment, if I held his hands over a flame, or if I put, the, put his hand on a stove, would you think I was a loving father? No, no one would believe that I loved that child. We would find that reprehensible, and yet that's exactly the way Christians describe God. As someone close to me once put it, I want a God who's at least as nice as I am. And then finally, there's the track record of oppression and abuse that you find if you follow any of the major religions of the world back in time. Crusades, jihad, burning people at the stake, inquisition, religious wars, oppression of females. Who needs religion? I can understand why some people have concluded that religion is the worst evil that has ever entered into the world. So I can empathize with people who say, I'm spiritual, not religious. People who want to be good but don't identify with organized religion. So why am I still a Christian? I guess that's what I want to share with you today. Not because I'm trying to coerce you into being like me, but just because we're friends and friends share things. There's three reasons I'm going to put forward today. Number one, I'm not satisfied with being as good as everyone else around me or good enough. A few years ago, I was sitting in the quality committee of a hospital, a very spiritual experience, I assure you. <sighs> Someone asked me why we needed to do something, but before I could even open my mouth, one of the nurses spoke up and said, don't you know, Dr. Scott doesn't care what other hospitals our size do. He wants us to shoot for the stars, to be the best of the best, to lead the way. Now, she meant it as a slam because I had actually said some of those words. But as I listened to her, I thought, yes, that's who I am. That's what I think. I want to shoot for the stars in every aspect of my life. Jesus said it this way, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father and in heaven is perfect. I don't think of his words as a cliche, and they're not a club that I ever took out to beat my, heads, my kids over the head with. I thirst to be all that I can be, and then some. Number two, I need help. For all my desire and all my striving to be good, I've concluded that I will never reach the stars. I can't jump over the moon. I can't even run well anymore. So if I'm going to live up to the prime directives that Jesus taught, I'm going to need help. Those prime directives were love God with all your heart, and your neighbor as yourself. 
if I'm ever going to live up to that dream, I need to be more than I am. I can identify with Paul's description of his experience. He said, woe is me. I keep on doing what I don't want to do. And what I do want to do, I don't do. I just can't seem to get it right. Who's going to deliver me from this dilemma? I thank God Jesus already has. And then later on, he said, I can do all things through, G through Christ who strengthens me. Now, when I was struggling with agnosticism, I read those words and I thought, what is he talking about? I can relate to the first. But what is he talking about? Christ strengthening me. I wanted to know how before I experienced it. Thomas, one of many that drew me back to Christianity. But the third thing is probably the bedrock. I want to be loved for who I am, not what I can do. Only slaves and machines are valued for the hard work they do. I don't want to be a slave. I don't want to be a machine. I have a friend whose granddaughter ran away about six months ago. They have begged her on Facebook to return. They filed a missing person report. They've offered rewards for information. They're praying daily for her safety. And in six months, they've heard exactly nothing. If she showed up on their doorstep, the door would absolutely fly off its hinges as they rushed to greet her. She would be swept off her feet with the ferocity of the hugs. There would be no doubt in her mind that she was loved and accepted and treasured because of the way she was greeted. Again, Paul describing his experience in discovering who Jesus was. Can anything separate us from the love of God? I'm convinced that nothing can, not death, nor life, angels, governments, supernatural powers, the past, the future, heights, depths, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that Jesus brings. I'm a Christian today because that's the God I met when I finally stopped listening to the arguments and read the Bible for myself. Today, I am somewhat at peace with the imperfections of the churches. God hasn't finished working on me. Maybe he's not finished working on them. I've discovered other ways of looking at some of the awful things God's people have said and done in the past or are doing right now in his name. He's not done with them yet. And he's not done with you either. But here's the catch. I didn't fall in love with my wife by spending time with the people who didn't like her. I had to spend time with her. I had to talk with her. I had to get to know her on her terms. And believe me, she set some pretty tough terms. I had to try to understand her dreams, her fears, her tears, and her vulnerability. You'll never get to know Jesus unless you do the same. Can you be spiritual without being religious? Yes, you can. But for myself, I found out I didn't want to be because I wanted to be more than I could be. I wanted to have someone to walk beside me and help me. 
and I wanted to be loved completely, totally, and unconditionally. So there are my thoughts today. Have a good day. Be safe. Be prudent. But above all, look up.